uh, you know, those who want to abolish prisons, I don't think they may not have the same understanding of the issues, and perhaps you would, in the way you present it. So your position on it is that is what? Well, yes, I am. Um, I identify as a prison abolitionist, uh, and those of us who are a part of what we call the 21st century abolition movement want to see the issues that prisons attempt to address but cannot want to see those issues dealt with uh, differently and more effectively i mean for example violence against women um, if we simply incarcerate every man uh, or woman who commits an act of violence against women, that doesn't necessarily mean that the problem goes away. What it means is we have ever more people behind bars. I think it's partly that we, it's the will of the people in a sense, that we live in a punishment society. People want yeah. their pound of flesh. Um, and oftentimes, they're not worried about recidivism. They're not worried about rehabilitation. It's that particular individual who's convicted of a crime needs to pay their debt to society. And we're conditioned to hear about their debt to society. And so you have a culture of people that are interested in seeing the bad person go to jail. And doesn't that also feed into the problem? Uh, most people, including myself, if I have to catch myself sometimes, when mm -hmm. someone does something um, bad to me, the first, the first instinct is to figure out how to get back at that person. Right. So, you know, how do we imagine justice in a very different context? Justice that's not based on vengeance, but justice that's made on repairing the relationships that are uh, damaged uh, uh, through uh, harm. It's a long-term plan, obviously. A very long-term plan. Very long-term plan. And you think about it, it wasn't that long ago when, you know, segregation was a reality. And it wasn't that long ago when a student gets killed because he integrates a school. Uh, this is in a, most people who are watching their lifetime. Are you, do you look at this like 20, 40, 50, 60 years? Is this a century long of constantly changing attitudes? You know, I often point out that when I was young growing up in Birmingham, Alabama, and I used to sometimes get very upset that um, as a black child I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't go to the amusement park. I couldn't go to the big library. We had to go to this uh, sort of rundown uh, black library. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mother was always very careful to tell me that this is not the way things were supposed to be. She said, this is not the way things are supposed to be, and they will change. Uh, so she allowed me to develop the capacity to imagine the future in a way that is that sometimes seems very radical but it seemed radical during the era of slavery and so today of course uh, uh, slavery even though we think we've abolished it we haven't but still in terms of the way people think about it it is uh, uh, it's seen as horrendous atrocious